What do psychics think about President Trump? Angel Sky TV. Well, I would have thought they'd got their answers ready for this. They would have seen it coming, right? Hi guys, it's Angel and, and Kalina. And Kalina. Angel and Kalina. Cruel parents, right? No? Is that too cliche? You must have chosen the names yourself. There must be a pecking order then, because Angel, I can understand bagging that name for yourself. But Cleaner? It's a bit like calling yourself Burger Flipper. Why would you choose such a shitty name? Perhaps Angel has chosen both of their names. <laughs> Dirty. Dirty, but I like it. And uh, today is November 9th. 2016. You sure about that? Want to phone a friend? It's very rarely I see someone get the month and date right, but not be so sure about the year. We've been looking at the future too much, you don't even know what time frame you're in. It's a meeting a lot of people are going to remember. Oi, Angel, your friend Cleaner, what the fuck was that? She's speaking in tongues already. It's a meeting a lot of people are going to remember. Five times and I'm still not getting it. I'm fairly sure the last bit is a lot of people are going to remember, but the first bit is still as clear as a crystal ball. A crystal ball that Lord Sauron has pissed all over the inside of. Yep, so I woke up at 2am and saw that Trump was leading in the polls and... Had a mini heart attack in the middle of the night and felt a little bit stressed out. But I, I kind of had an idea that that was going to happen. Mm. It's amazing how many things psychics get right after the event. I had a heart attack, the news was so stark. But it's alright, kind of saw that coming. There's supposedly two reasons why toddlers and very young children tell lies. One of them is the obvious, they simply don't want to get into trouble. But another theory goes that children don't realise how consistent the world is, and that they think on some level, they think that by lying about an event actually changes the reality, say it happened differently, makes it have happened differently. And a lot of times when psychics are talking, I can see those types of lies in effect. And she just busted herself, she didn't need to say that she found the election result a shock. But what she really wanted to say was that she knew what was going to happen, which was obviously untrue. It went against her own story. And this is because it's so childish and simplistic and see-through. It shows the naive form of lying in effect. You'll see them do it. You'll see them both do it a couple of times throughout this video. And it always amounts to the same thing. Lying about the world because they don't like the way the world works. We watch these women doing this a few times and it becomes apparent. Somebody who lies about the basics of the world and then claims to have psychic powers, it's see-through. It's absolute bullshit. Um, we should talk about the astrological weather. Yeah, let's talk about the astrological weather. It's fucking cold and it's not very dense and everything's spinning around each other out there for millions and billions of light years in every direction. I look at the stars sometimes and I've never seen a pussy grabbing president up there. It's probably just as well really because you expect the sky to have less than a PG rating. Daddy, what are those stars doing? Look away, son. They're just predicting a pussy grabbing president. But it would be more, wouldn't it? They wouldn't just be fixated on major American events who would be like, Daddy, what are the stars doing? Well, son, millions and millions of people will be having sex tonight and the stars are just reflecting that. It's not really tall, dark, handsome strangers. It's just their fucking wives and husbands, girlfriends and whatnot. In fact, there's so much information up there, I can't discern anything apart from fucking. Yeah, let's talk about the astrological weather. The fact that the 12 or 13 constellations that you yap about will have such a minimal and pissy gravitational effect on the Earth and such a minimal and pissy amount of light that reaches us or anything else that comes from them that it's massively outweighed just by the moon, let alone the entire rest of the fucking universe. Seven billion people on the planet, and you've got 
12 basic personality types. If each of your fucking personality subsets has to account for around half a billion people, then it will necessarily have to be vague. In fact, it's so vague, it doesn't mean anything. Alright. Yeah, well, one thing I want to talk about is on November 14th, we have a full moon in Taurus. Um, so this full moon is going to be very important for Taurus, Scorpios, Leos, and Aquarius. This is going to be important for one third of the population. What's significant about this moon is it's the closest it's been to the Earth since 1948. Um, and... What I think is important about this moon, and this is if you subscribe to the moon being a hologram, which Angel and we were sort of talking about mm -hmm. before we filmed. So those who may not... Fuck me, Cleaner. So the hologram moon has been closest to the Earth since 1948. How is this going to be important? Now it hasn't even got any gravity. It's just a picture in the sky. What the fuck are you about to say? I don't know about it. If you go to YouTube, there's a channel called Crow, uh, C-C-R-O-W-777, and there's, he has a video called The Moon Is Not What You Think. Okay, I'm going to show you Turd Boy 777's theory about the moon, but in an unusual way of looking at new things, I'm first going to show you the debunk. So here comes our aircraft, and you can see the first part of the wave just dis disappearing off the side there, and here is the second part of the wave crossing the moon, just as we see in Crow 777's Lunar Wave videos. And here is the second clip. The plane is flying across at the same angle, but this clip is actually much clearer with a more defined wave. Let's take a look now. So you can clearly see that first wave, a nice defined edge as it crosses the moon. And here comes the second part of the wave. Again, just as we see in Crow 777's Lunar Wave videos. Now there's something I'd like to be very, very clear about. I'm not saying for one moment that all of Crow 777's Lunar Wave videos are caused by passing aircraft. I'm simply using these clips to demonstrate that atmospheric layering can and does cause the type of lunar wave phenomenon that we see in Crow 777's videos. Obviously in this case it is aircraft that is causing them, but I firmly believe that the cause of the lunar waves that we see in Crow's videos are passing warm and cold air masses. But of course that is impossible to predict and it's impossible to see we can only see the results, not the cause. But in this case, we can see the cause and we can see the results as well. And using these clips from passing aircraft serves to demonstrate that atmospheric layering can and does indeed cause the lunar wave effect that we see, for example, in Crow 777's videos. So if you see a displacement wave traveling across the moon, there could be an atmospheric explanation for that. Now, given that the moon is 485,000 kilometers away, if you're taking a video of it, it's quite likely something in the atmosphere, something in the distance between your camera and the moon is causing the displacement wave, if you see one. An inquiring mind would search for the truth of the matter, and this guy He's fallen a little bit short of the scientific principle. He, he's, you know, he's, he's stated he's all in. He believes it's to do with atmospheric layering. And it could well be. In the same way as if you throw a stick into water, it appears to change direction after it goes under the water. It's a refraction of the light, making it appear to move a little bit. The same thing can happen with atmospheric density. Warm air is always going up. Cold air is always going down. Different pressure regions. High pressure is moving to low pressure. Low pressure is moving to high. If you can actually see see through the effect of some of this, you might get a displacement. And it's known to happen, it's a quantified phenomenon that the atmosphere bends light in such a way as to make things appear slightly different to where they actually are. So we've got a maybe, we've got a maybe answer. Without checking the equipment, we've got a maybe answer in the atmosphere. Now here comes Turd Boy 777's view of this, and you'll see the difference. You'll see the difference between an inquiring mind and what is basically a hysterical mind. And I'm going to zoom out 
there goes the wave to the top and there's going to be another wave coming in from the bottom. Now I'm going to run this at 30 percent so as the wave comes in you can choose any landmark you want. Here comes the wave from the bottom to the top. Choose any little landmark you can see there and watch it be displaced. Now that round looking ring crater forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards and one more time forward and I'll zoom out and you can watch it go all the way to the top. Again, this is at 30% with quite a few filters like Find Edge and some other things, Invert. Now that means a lot. That means the entire image of the moon was displaced by this wave. So there's a couple things about the lunar wave I thought I would point out as this seems to be the season for crazy people to steal website domains, defraud people, take my footage of this clip here and tell people that it's fake, that I use software to do this. This is a real clip. I'm not the only one who's filmed it and I have shown you some things that you'll have to ponder it. They mean, they really mean a lot actually. Uh, it's an amazing piece of footage. I doubt if I'll ever shoot anything more important than this. The moon's just not what you think. Alright, 13 seconds later we filmed the lunar wave event which I'm now calling a hologram. I'm by my computer on the arm of the couch or something. Man, you were not prepared. Whoa, there's the wave. We just got the wave. There goes the second one. See it? No. We just got the holographic wave. I okay, now I'm beginning to think the reason for the color problem with the eclipse is directly related to this wave, which I'm 90% sure now is a hologram. So you see how this guy has a hypothesis that the lunar wave means that the moon is a hologram. Now the hypothesis can only be tested by going up there and walking around on it. Obviously he's not going to trust the lunar landings as reported by NASA, so the hypothesis can't be tested. Now this is where the inquiry stops. Now he hasn't looked at other explanations and he hasn't started to account for things that the orbital moon mass is correlated with. Tides, high and low tides, a 23 hour lunar orbit correlates precisely with lunar tide so much so that we've basically used it as a sort of tidal clock for shipping purposes for hundreds of years. That would indicate that if the moon is a hologram, it is a hologram covering up something that is the same mass as the moon. You would have to ask how does a lunar hologram block out the sun during eclipses? Well he does have an explanation that sort of rambles on it as far as I can tell it's basically hundreds of UFOs fly around making sure that the hologram holds up and no light gets through during the eclipse. We couldn't really discuss the whys but we're back down to a bunch of hypotheses that can't be tested. You see how you can't claim a 90% assurance that the moon is a hologram based on zero evidence. The lunar wave is not evidence of the hologram. Your hypothesis is that it's evidence, but your certainty is zero. You can't even claim a 1% certainty based on this evidence. It's so unscientific. Now he's excitable, you know, his mind has sort of whispered to him, you, you, you've been conned all these years, he's bought into it, he's going for it, this is a hologram, the moon's not what you think, something terrible's happening, blah 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 blah. And all this springs out of a zero certainty, a zero certainty that has other explanations which are far more likely. So he will be, I mean, people say, oh scientists are so boring and they're trying to cover everything up and poo-poo everything and blah 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 blah. It's because the amateurs do shit like this. They just don't know what the fuck they're doing. His finding is that a lunar wave is observable due to something between his eye and the 485,000 kilometer distant moon that he's looking at. And his conclusion is that the wave means the moon is a hologram. It's reaching. It's claiming a positive with actually no evidence at all. And we have much simpler explanations for the lunar wave. In this next clip, Turd Boy himself stumbles over a possible explanation. He says it's like looking through water. Well, what is looking through water? It's a difference in density. It's a difference in how the material light travelling through is affected by it, and that can happen in the atmosphere. He trips over a possible explanation in this clip and just gabbles right on. Here it comes. 
underlined crater in the center of your screen. Watch how it's displaced, almost like you're looking through water. There goes the wave backwards. Now, it's stuff like this that's not presented as a hypothesis. It's not presented in an even-handed manner. Stuff like this gets passed off to idiots, and look what they do with it. I'm not saying he's right. You're not saying he's right, but you're going to do your damnedest to support what he said. I'm just saying there's something that maybe we should look into, because you'll see a line go through the moon, and it's almost like the moon's being reset. Um, so the moon is a hologram. That's what they think. They, oh. that's, what, that's the theory, is that the moon is maybe a machine or something going on, that what we see, that one side of the moon, is... A projection and if we go to the history of like the moon like tarot cards like if you read old school interpretations of tarot the the moon is the illusion it's about fake energy and you can see how these shitty ideas spread that is sort of happening in real time right before our eyes she's seen this video it's almost like she didn't quite comprehend it saying like it's a machine or whatever the guy himself has just put forward this cuntish theory and she's seen this no reference to anything else whatsoever she starts pulling out historical bits of shit to try and support it and worst of all it's historical tarot card use the worst kind of substantiating bullshit she could come out with right now and i think her friend angel knows it She's there, she's going to have to pull this back somehow. She's thinking, I can't believe you said that on the fucking video. And if I edit it out of the video, you're going to be all but hurt. And now this is really socially awkward. Yeah, you're going to put this on YouTube. You're going to tell your fucking stupid psychic buddies and subscribers and people who watch this shit that the moon may be a hologram and we should look into that. Without any fucking thought at all. It's like, most psychics that I meet, they are either complete charlatans they know damn well they're ripping people off or they're so fucking useless they don't have a single talent they are crap at life and everything so they create something that nobody else can see and claim to be an expert in it the majority of psychics that I've come across fall into that category you know, if you've got no memory, no intellect, they don't know how the world works, they're usually immature and stupid. And But suddenly, they're so fucking fine-tuned inside that they can tell the future and read people's minds. It absolutely doesn't stack up. And this is what you get, psychic spread shit, because they can't think things through. And this is where I think they bust themselves. If you had heightened intuitive awareness, if you were holding hands with God on some level, you would be abutted to the ultimate intelligence. If you had psychic ability, you would not be drawn in by stupid shit like the holographic moon theory, and you wouldn't try to support it with the historical moon in tarot cards. Stuff like that. Interesting. So, I never actually heard that theory that the moon was a hologram but I remember yeah. you mentioning something that it was placed in the universe to brilliant this is such a highbrow conversation I haven't heard that theory but I remember you saying something else stupid about the moon watch us or something that's like that. one that's another uh, yeah the, uh, another you go to Linda Moulton Howell she has she's a journalist and she does different reports on what others have brought to her their theories or their experiences and so that's one because hmm. there's a lot of questions. Like if you talk to astrophysics, they are, or, or sorry, astro uh, astronomers, they are. Um, bleh, or, that. That's what your kind would call having problems with your throat chakra. It's a physiological response to the fact you're lying right now. You haven't spoken to astronomers about this, and you know it. <laughs> so, and we talk to astronomers. Uh, they question that. Why is the moon perfect? Like perfect between the Earth and the Sun, that it perfectly blocks out the Sun during the eclipse. So right. why... This shit really winds me up. There are 400 infinitesimally unlikely, miraculous, amazing things about our solar system, planet, biology. 400 fucking miracle things that make life on Earth possible. But the moon's one of them. Not the fact that it's the right size to block the sun out when it crosses its path. That's neither here nor there. Without the moon, there could be no life on Earth. It would never have evolved. 
It's like it, it's so fucking dumb. Oh wow, amazing! Astronomers are asking why? Why is the moon this size? Why does it work like this? And you know, for the most part, they've answered those fucking questions because we've got samples from the moon. We know it's made out of the same stuff as the Earth, and it's the same age. And now we have the theory that Thea crashed into Earth, smashed off this bit of rock that gathered all the other debris as it was spinning around the Earth, and that's the moon. Brilliant. We've largely answered it in a theoretical way based on some supporting evidence. So when these fucking psychics go off half-cocked with the armchair analysis of things they really don't know what they're talking about, picking this thing out like it's so amazing. Yes, it's amazing, but there are 400 other amazing things that we know about. It's fairly standard for life on Earth to be miraculous. We don't need your so-called psychic cunts to get overexcited about one of them and even a shitty aspect of one of them to teach us how impressive life is. All this stuff winds me up. It's so patronising. Thick bitches. Why is that? Why, why are we the only moon in the solar system that does that? Jupiter has 63 moons. And None of them block the sun. Right. So there's a lot of questions. Uh, Mars has two moons. And so there's just a lot of things that it's, our moon is really unique. Yes, it is unique because it's not formed in the way that moons are normally formed. But we know about that. You stupid, stupid fuck. Why don't you go and find out about it rather than just sitting there going, wow, the mystery is amazing. No, what you're talking about as mystery there is pretty much solved. <laughs> Fucking, the fact of it is amazing. Sitting there being ignorant is not. Uh, why, like, why doesn't it rotate? All the other bodies rotate. So there's a lot of things that we don't know. So it's just to question it, hmm. why? So how is that significant with Trump? It resetting yesterday evening or last night was it or? It re, uh, if if I remember correctly, I believe it resets near the spring equinox three days before. But we'll see the lines go uh, through. But I think it's significant with Trump where where the moon is so close, where the moon has been so close, and that okay. there's a change of it, like a big change for the world with Trump being in there. So nice. Seriously, after all that ignorance you said about the moon, now you're coming out as an astrological expert and you're going to use the moon is going to form part of your reading your astrology your predictions whatever seriously 1948 i'm just trying to think i'm really poor at my history but was there anything significant that happened the last time the moon was close yes i'd say there were some significant events in 1948 given that in 1947 the british empire started pulling out of the middle east and India and Pakistan, leaving Israeli troops to start ethnically cleansing and genociding select parts of the West Bank, leading to the now 70-year conflict between Israeli Jews and Palestinian Arabs and the Brotherhood of Arabs via Islam to get pissed off with Israel to the point of wanting to wipe it out. I'd say that was a pretty significant development. And I said 1947, but they were there administrating the handover until 1948, and the same in India. While partitioning India, January 1948, Gandhi started starving himself. These are the sort of times you're dealing with. Yes, every fucking country after the Second World War was reorganising its priorities and doing weird shit and weird political parties. Communists and all kinds of shit were being elected. Yes, I'd say 1948 was significant, but cunts like you would have no idea about that. You think it's significant because a hologram moon came close to the Earth. That year, not on top of my head, but I would say like it's right after World War Two, like not to put negative energy, but just mm -hmm. that that what there was a reset like around that time or years before the United Nations was established. Like there's things like that was okay uh, that was going on. So I just and I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying this is something that this is where my mind goes. Right. So one of the things I was struggling with this morning was posting. Uh, like I felt really angry first of all. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I felt like I didn't feel shocked. Like everybody's like, oh, my God, I'm so shocked. How could they vote Trump in? I was shocked he was running. So my shock kind of like maybe it's, mm -hmm. you know, dumbed down over however long it's been. Um, and I was also shocked to learn, like I learned about the electoral process, which I was really shocked that, I mean, it's complete crap, like how people get elected. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, how old are you? You didn't understand the electoral system in your own country. 
Did you think you had proportional representation? How the fuck did you think it worked? How old are you, 20? You've lived through four or five of these fucking things. How can you not know it's an electoral college system? And how can you not know the pros and cons of that system? Surely there are people in America going, oh, we want proportional representation, just like there are in Britain, which is where everybody knows you've got a first-past-the-post system, which is quite similar to the electoral college system. How can you not know about this stuff? This is what I mean. Psychics have no idea about the world in which they live and I don't think they can grasp it. This is why they need to make shit up to be good at. In the first place and how undemocratic it is. Yep, democracy is undemocratic. It always is when you don't like the results, darling. So I don't, I can't say that I was shocked. I was slightly angry because I thought about my children and I thought about the world, the safety of the world and things like that. And then I thought, you know what? No, I'm not gonna go into that fear mongering crap. Like everybody is gonna go into that. Apart from the 60 million people who voted for Donald Trump, you mean? This is what I mean by it's patronizing. I'm gonna do something different, I'm special. I'm gonna handle my anger at the election result. Fucking brilliant. So it's really a test of your willpower to stay positive, mm. I think. Like, I'm generally a pretty positive person, but you can easily go down that road and start being like, he's going to destroy the world, he's going to start World War Three. you know, he's a misogynist xenophobe, like... Well, since political debate has been hijacked by the left, and all you ever fucking hear is xenophobe, racist, islamophobe, misogynist, these are not weighty accusations. You need examples. You need facts to back up your bullshit, which is where the whiny bastards have been overturned by the silent majority. This whole racist, sexist, xenophobe, misogynist, this bullshit doesn't mean anything. It's just words that you think are bad labels that you bandy around onto people that you don't like. And you have no substantive argument you need to use examples and surely if anything to start teaching you speak like a fucking adult justify what you're saying this election result is it and look at you just continuing on doing the same fucking shit just even like just straight like basic economics and like, mm -hmm. not even talking about the energy and yeah i, I thought of like this is going to really wake some people up like the 56 million people that voted for him. Oh my god, it's the eternal cry of the perpetually ignorant. Everyone else needs to wake up. Everyone else has a shock in store. Everyone else is wrong. If that's even the truth. That, I know, I was going to bring that so up. So that's like, the other thing I thought of. I thought of, like, we are so innocent and naive to think that the democratic system is true. Mm that we believe that our vote matters when really you know i've been saying this since i was 17 years old and not to age myself but that was a long time ago that there is no democracy and i remember being laughed at in high school like what are you talking about you don't know what you're talking about you're too young to know what you're talking about. there's another one the blood vessels in your nose dilated because you were lying it's another physiological response to talking shit that's why your nose was suddenly itchy and you had to touch it like that you're generalizing a scenario that you wish had happened the way you're telling it, but actually didn't happen at all. Laughed at in high school, like, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. You're too young to know what you're talking about. You were too young to know what you were talking about. You've walled yourself up in your psych, backing up into this fantasy world of I'm a psychic and I'm actually right and my views are sacrosanct, means that you've been talking shit since you were a child. You fucking brainless moron. This is what's wrong with psychic people, and it is literally everything.